Welcome to another RetroArch tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going over custom assets, because when you actually boot up uh, RetroArch for the first time, it'll look very similar to this. It won't look like this color scheme wise, because I have um, the Ozone theme set to Dracula, whereas normally it would just be set to, I think, basic black. There we go. It would normally look like this, like this but I like Dracula, so I'll leave that on. But no, the icons will look like this, which are fairly bland and uneventful, in my personal opinion. So obviously, once you've like booted into RetroArch and done the update assets, I've just done that. What you'll want to do, if you're wanting to change the icons, is uh, close out of RetroArch, go into your assets folder, and the only thing you need to really worry about is the XMB folder, because this contains all of the icon packs that RetroArch uses, and more interestingly, is that the only icons that RetroArch actually sees is the ones that are located in Monochrome, for some reason. I know you can actually switch it in RetroArch, I'm pretty sure it might actually... Now that I think about it, that might only be um, if you're using XMB as your menu driver. Yeah, screw it. I, I think it might be to do with that. Oops. Box art scroller. Yeah, I think it's only when you're using X and B you can actually switch between the different icon sets. Whereas in Ozone, it uses whatever is located within Monochrome. And there's no way of changing that for some reason. So we go into Monochrome, and you'll notice this. This is what they all look like. Fairly bog standard, really. I think these are different because I just did this, but I messed up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hang on. We'll just do this. Just get rid of all the icons. Yeah, missing assets. Oh no. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. I really should have like emptied the folder before I started, but for some reason I thought they would have already all disappeared. But this is what the monochrome folder looks like normally. Fairly flat, fairly bland, and just very white. Honestly, makes it kind of hard to tell them apart a lot of the times because they do look, they don't look that similar, but you know, I just, I just don't like how bland they look. So I would want to change it for something like retroactive or just retro system. And I'm just trying to think the best way of doing this. Yeah, there's, there's two ways you can do it, which is basically just rename retroactive to monochrome. Or just paste the PNG folder into Monochrome. But I think I'm going to go with just renaming it. So I'll just do this Monochrome Monochrome 2. And uh, just go over to Retroactive and name that Monochrome. Just double check. Yep. So now if I open up Retroarch. Hey, it worked. It does pop up saying there's missing assets. Because I think there are things within like the Monochrome folder that don't exist in here. So in that case, it probably would be best to just copy and paste it across. I just wanted to do both options because I wasn't entirely sure. So if we paste that in, go back to XMB, <laughs> rename this back to Retroactive. And then rename Monochrome 2 to just Monochrome. Now if I open it, does it still give us the missing assets? No, it doesn't. Okay, so your best bet is to just paste. It's not that bad. Like, yeah, you have a lot more files, but at the end of the day, they take up no space, so who really cares? But there we go, we, we now have a new, a new icon pack, and it looks a lot nicer than it normally does. You know, it's actually got colour and personality. Quite a lot of them look, the, look very similar with this, though. But you just experiment with the different icon packs. There's loads. There's probably custom ones you can find online, too. Now, the only thing you may notice is that both of my playlists have not got an icon. The reason for that is because the icon needs to match the playlist name exactly for it to actually uh, pick it up. Otherwise, it just displays as this. So because my playlist is called PlayStation and PlayStation 2, it's not recognized because in the icons, uh, it is called Sony. So Sony PlayStation 2. So where's PlayStation? Just the first one. Because I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to name this to PlayStation. 
and then with this just call this PlayStation dash content. But then I'm going to go back to my playlists and name PlayStation 2 to just Sony dash PlayStation 2. And that should populate both of the icons. Hey, there you go. So yeah, because I renamed the icon to PlayStation, it matches the playlist. And then I just renamed the playlist to match the icon, and that also worked. It's really up to you what you would prefer to do. Like whether you would prefer to rename the playlist or rename the icon. Entirely down to you. But that is as simple as the process is. And I'm pretty sure this is the exact same. Actually, I can say for certain it's the exact same regardless of if you're on uh, PC, Xbox, PS3, etc. Any version of RetroArch, as long as it has the same file structure with an assets folder, should be able to do this. And I'm pretty sure the um, like using custom assets only affects XMB and Ozone, because those are the only two um, interfaces that actually use icons, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, RGUI and GLUI. I don't even know. But I think with XMB you don't need to go through this. Because I'm pretty sure you can switch icon packs around willy-nilly. I'm just going to check. I don't really need to do this in the video, but yeah, whatever. Let me just double check. Oh, god. I am not used to using XMB. So for user interface on XMB... Maybe not. Huh. Electric blue ribbon. Oh, there we go. You can with XMB. Yeah, XMB allows you to switch. Interesting. So this only actually affects Ozone, because with Ozone you can't do that. <laughs> I don't think. I'm going to find out. Yeah, just do it in the video. It's a learning experience. Right, so this is kind of like a hack to using custom assets. I mean, it does work if you're wanting to use custom assets. That would also work. Yeah, okay, this is the only way you can do it on Ozone. XMB actually allows you to switch icon packs, but Ozone doesn't. You have to use the hack to do this. So this technically only works for Ozone. Because with XMB you can just switch between them. Unless you're wanting to use actual custom assets, in which case it would work for XMB too. But there we go. You now know how to use custom assets in Ozone. It's all to do with the monochrome folder. It's basically the takeaway. But that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe. And until next time, take care.